Harrison, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, Will. Now, I understand that you guys are doing some research in um, Bunyan's, their development. Can you tell us a little bit more about Bunyan's? Specifically, what are they and why are they called Bunyan's? Well, Bunyan is actually a lay term for a condition called hallux valgus. Mm -hmm. And uh, hallux valgus is a deformity of the foot where the big toe joint becomes angled towards the second toe. Mm -hmm. And over time what happens is you develop a bony and soft tissue swelling around the big toe joint, which makes your foot very broad and creates problems with uh, finding comfortable shoes and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, why they're called Bunyan's is is quite interesting. Uh, It's thought because uh, the... Latin term for turnip is bunios and because what happens is if you do have very large bunions they do have the appearance of a a sort of a big bulbous turnip so they think that's why they're called bunions. Fascinating and do bunions actually impede walking mobility those sorts of things or are they purely aesthetic for example if I was Miss Venezuela um, you know I'm preparing for Miss Miss Universe and and you know I'm yeah, primmed and proper, but I have bunions there. I'm going to get rid of them because obviously they don't look that good. Uh, is it people really getting in for that, purely removing for the purely aesthetic value, or, or is it really are they getting removed because of mobility and it's actually painful, those sorts of things? Well, in, in younger people, the aesthetic concerns are definitely a major problem, particularly in younger women. Yeah. Um, but as you get older, uh, bunions start to have more of an impact on your mobility. Uh, we've done several studies to show that uh, having bunions impairs balance and walking patterns okay. and in elderly people having a bunion increases your risk of having an accidental fall so it really depends on the age if you're an older person it does have a much bigger impact on your mobility now you did mention research and the research you guys are currently undertaking is looking at um, whether bunions are hereditary or whether or not they're environmental or caused by you know wearing high heel stilettos or, or what have you um, tell us a little bit more about this research Well, um, the the cause of bunions is still a bit of a mystery and um, the the area of research that we're looking into at the moment is to try and work out to what extent they're uh, inherited because if you do talk to people who have bunions, a lot of them will say that their parents had bunions or their grandparents had bunions. Um, And there's two different ways you can approach this. Uh, The first way is to draw up what's called a pedigree chart and that's like a family tree where you jot down who has bunions and who doesn't. And then by looking at what's called a pattern of transmission, through the different generations, you can build up a bit of a picture as to whether they're inherited or not. Mm -hmm. Uh, The only problem with that approach is that it's very difficult to recall back more than a couple of generations. So if I was to ask you whether your great-grandmother had bunions, you might struggle to remember whether she did or not. Well, of course, I could dig her up, but there's probably not much left of her, I guess. That's true, that's true. So it does have some limitations, that Mm. sort of research. The, The second approach is to do what's called a classical twin study. And uh, the way this works is that there's two types of twins. We have identical or monozygotic twins Mm -hmm. who share 100% of their DNA. And then we have fraternal or dizygotic twins who share on average about 50% of their DNA. Now why use twins? This is, I'm kind of fascinated by this. It's obviously not some sort of fetish thing. It's obviously, you know, there must be a reason why using twins because bunions are absolutely bunions. I guess a bunion on one foot looks the same as another bunion, I guess. Why couldn't you just use people from everywhere? Well, the, the twin approach is really quite unique. It does give you a very powerful way of exploring a genetic uh, predisposition to different conditions. And uh, twin research has been used for all sorts of different conditions over okay. the years. Um, For example, osteoarthritis uh, has been shown in twin studies to have a very strong genetic component and even uh, behavioural factors such as whether you take up smoking um, does seem to be uh, influenced by your genes. So what we do is we look at the pattern of uh, concordance in twin pairs Um, So what that means is we look at how much they match up for different conditions in the monozygotic and the dizygotic twins and then we can estimate what percentage of that variation is due to genes Mm -hmm. and then the rest of it must be due to environmental factors. Absolutely fascinating research, Hilton. What else is the Musculoskeletal Research Centre doing these days? Well, we've got a a, a large number of projects. We have seven different research groups. um, And the whole aim of the centre is to work out why people develop different musculoskeletal conditions Mm -hmm. and the best ways to treat them. 
Uh, so, for example, the foot and ankle group of the, uh, the Musculoskeletal Research Centre is looking at different treatments for plantar heel pain, mm -hmm. uh, for osteoarthritis of the foot and also for Achilles tendon problems. Mm -hmm. uh, the knee orthopaedics group studies the way people uh, walk following different types of knee surgery. Okay. And uh, the back pain group is looking at uh, what's the best physiotherapy treatment approach for low back pain. Great. Sounds like you're doing some great work there, Hilton. Thanks for coming on Diagnosis Health. Thanks, Paul. Well, that's all we've got time for on tonight's episode of Diagnosis Health. Hope you enjoyed the show. I'm your host, Paul Peschlings.